Today, we've got for the first time in a couple years, Tomer Rabinovich, one of the most favorite guests by listeners due to all of his hard-hitting tactics and strategies that have helped him and his clients to sell tens of billions of dollars on Amazon. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed, organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. We've got a super serious seller here coming from uh, Israel, I believe. You're, are you in Israel right now? Yeah. We've got Tomer on the line here. This is the third time he has been on the podcast. He was actually one of the original like three or four episodes we ever did. And still to date, you know, one of the more popular episodes that we've had because he's always so full of, of strategy and excellent, um, you know, tips for you guys out there. So, so first of all, it's been a while. It's, it's been probably almost two years since you've been on the uh, uh, show, Tomer. Uh, how have things been going uh, for you? Yeah, yeah, very well. Thanks, Bradley. Um, yeah, you actually wanted me to jump on a podcast, I think, exactly one year after the last one. And I told you, look, I'm writing this book let me finish the book and then i'll yep. jump on and it just took forever to get it done so yeah <laughs> yeah well finally we're here the book the book is ready to go uh i haven't had a chance to uh read it yet but you know i've been hearing uh some good things on it uh we'll definitely get into that but what um you know the first thing you know since it's been a while since we've talked um the first thing i wanted to talk about was was launch you know like you know but i, I don't know how much uh, you used back in the day of, of different, you know, services or like, you know, search, find, buy or two-step URLs or different things that we were using. But a lot of these things that a lot of us were using, and, and it wasn't against necessarily terms of service, a lot of these are now uh, explicitly against terms of service. So, so for the last, uh, I don't know how long it's been now, you know, but it's been, it's been a, it's been a minute since we've had to switch uh, strategies uh, for you and your clients, what kind of launch strategies are, are you using in order to get to page one? Yeah, so seems like everything is against TOS these days, right? Um, so one thing that I can say about Amazon is that I one of my favorite questions to ask and ask this like every major seller out there is how do you think Amazon wants us to launch products? Um, and they all say I don't know or or they don't care or whatever. I think all they really want is outside traffic. Like they just want more eyeballs in Amazon. So. If you have any sort of following, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, all of that can help. I'm personally not doing any of that. <laughs> um, but if you have any of that, that's great. What I'm doing is I'm actually leveraging my own inserts to launch products. And this is something that I have uh, i don't really think I talked on any podcast before. But basically what I am doing is, you know, when you have an insert, in the old days, what you would do is you would offer a warranty or watch a video or whatever, and then maybe you ask for a review after that, right? That's like a way to get reviews. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't really do anything with your audience that you're building. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just continuing the flow. What I mean by that is imagine that someone signs up for a warranty and then I stop, right? And if you, or even if I ask for a review, they leave a five-star review and then I stop. And if you think about it, they just bought a product from me full price, um, sign up for the warranty, left a review, which is probably five stars, and then they stop the flow. So what I'm doing now is I'm just telling them, yeah. by the way, we just launched this new product. Do you want it for free? Do you want it for 50% off? Do you want, or, or I tell them, look, there is a steep green coupon on the listing right now. Go ahead and buy it. Uh, and the way we do that is we use um, Typeform. I don't know if you're familiar with Typeform, but it's basically like a dynamic form that Not you can true. fill out when they... Uh, sign up for the warranty. So basically, it's a it's a dynamic form. What it means is that if they answer A, I can send them to B, and if they answer C, I can send them to D, sort of thing. Um, so depending on what they answer, I can send them different ways. Kind of like many chat, basically. But I don't really want to do Messenger or Facebook or any of that mm -hmm. stuff. I just want to do something like off of anything really, and it's just my own my own thing. Um, and that's been working really well. So if you think about it, let's say you have 100 sales a day for your brand. Let's say that's like what you have. And you have a 5%, 10% opt-in okay. uh, on your inserts. So if you have 5%, you have five people opting in every day on your inserts. And if you have one or two of them going into that offer, that means one or two sales a day every single day for the new product you're launching. And that end of the funnel, that end of the flow, I can always go in and change it. 
so then let's say you know like 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 what what if this is a a new to Amazon brand you know like like you know it's a it's a new uh, you know client who hasn't built up his his you know maybe he's not maybe the brand is not new to Amazon but but he hasn't built up you know a a list and he hasn't put other inserts in and so he's never used this or maybe it's somebody who's just launching their first product on Amazon or it's somebody who's who's launching a new brand you know a, a new brand to Amazon how do you get that initial traction because you know the inserts thing is kind of like a after the fact you know you have to you know if you build it they will come kind of thing like they had to have purchased it to even see the insert so how how do you leverage these strategies right so i mostly as you know consult bigger sellers like seven eight figure sellers some of the aggregators in the industry as well yeah. for newest newer sellers i think they just gotta hustle you know they just gotta go to again all mm -hmm. the social media platforms wherever their customers are depending on their niche and their audience and just Target those people. Just message them. What I what I used to do on Instagram is I just built a very small following just using the same hashtags as like the biggest in my niche used. And then we started doing um, surveys on Instagram. And we said, do you want this product for free? Yes or no? And all of those that commented, yes, yes, yes. You just reach out to them and offer them a PayPal rebate uh, to buy your product. You know, so... Again, those are like pretty much the only thing you can do. Now, if you want to be completely OS compliant, you don't want to do any rebates or anything, we are now using a lot of the green coupons. So we will tell them, look, instead of um, $25, it's only $15. There is a $10 coupon right now. If you buy it, mm -hmm. send me the order ID and I'll send you a free gift or I'll send you another product for free. You know, uh, And then when they send us the order ID, then we can message them again a, a week later asking for that review and for their honest feedback on Amazon. Okay, cool, cool. But let's let's just completely switch gears now and talk a little bit listing optimization. You know, your your very first episode and even before then, when, when you and I had talked, you know, you had uh, told us about this strategy you were using about how you know w when you're getting ready to to like give the direction to your graphic designers, photographers, etc. for their image stack, you you kind of like print all of the images of the. Uh, of the competitors and kind of list it all out like on a, on a, you know, Google sheet or Google doc or PowerPoint. So they can kind of see the layout and see the trends and different things. Uh, I know you're still using that, that strategy today. And that's why we implemented it in helium 10. I know you, you do your own tools too. And you even have that in your own tool stack. It's just like a methodology. We even do it before we think what it is that we want to do. If that makes any sense. Like if everyone has a picture of how to hmm. install the product, we're going to have that already. It's not even, we don't have any thought process before that, you know, that's that's where the thought process starts. Uh, so we get all, everything they've done. We try to improve it and we try to come up with our own images as well. And that's how I do everything. So if you think about the product, right? So the product that you brought to Amazon is actually a better product um, than your competitors, hopefully, mm -hmm. right? That's what we are all trying to do. But then when it comes to like building your title, bullet points, images, creating a listing, what we're doing is where most sellers are just starting from scratch, right? They're just scrambling through. So they might even use Cerebro or Magnet or something to kind of try and come up with keywords. But instead, what they should also be doing is they should look at the titles of their competitors. They should be looking at their bullet points. They should be looking at what are the main benefits? What are the five benefits that each competitor is mentioning in their images, in their bullet points, and list all of those out and then see which are the benefits that are crucial right maybe it is maybe it doesn't break maybe that's like a big feature mm -hmm. of that product right or it will last a lifetime is a benefit of that product that's one thing you want to play uh, play with and mention and if all of them mentioned in the bullet points and not in the images we're going to have an image about it probably and that's how we improve the images vice versa mm -hmm. with the bullet points um an image is obviously huge right especially like main image so the main image you really want to do your homework on um on the competitors because you really need to stand out from the competitors. I always say that you don't have to be the best listing on Amazon. You just have to be better than your competitors on Amazon. So, so guys, th this is, this is something that I think is one of those evergreen strategies. you know, sometimes strategies on Amazon, like we were talking about launch strategies and stuff has to adjust over time because Amazon changes terms of service. But this is one of those that is never going to be irrelevant. And, and that is looking at 
not just the existing competitors' keywords. I think, you know, five years ago, not everybody was doing that. Nowadays, you know, with Helium 10 Cerebro, like, like Tomer said, like everybody knows like, okay, yeah, let me reverse engineer my competitors, you know, keyword strategy by using Cerebro and, and, and looking at what, what they're focusing on and PPC and things like that. But what a lot of sellers still, even to this day, don't do enough is really analyze the rest of the listing, not just the keywords, but where they have it in their listing and also the, the images. So, so if you're wondering what tool I was talking about, there is in listing analyzer, if you have a diamond plan and above, you use the media comparison button. So when you put a whole bunch of ASINs into listing analyzer, you hit media comparison, you'll see all of those uh, images laid out there. Now um, we're going to get back to a, a, a lot of strategies uh, that you have uh, for us, but, but I wanted to take a, a minute here to talk about the new book. Like you've literally been planning this for what probably almost two years now right yeah yeah it's been uh i just checked it's actually been like uh over a bit over two years like two weeks over two years um yeah here it is i don't know i assume some watching on the video so uh i just got the first copies yesterday uh to my house so so th did you use um like a kdp account in order to have it and then now amazon is the publisher or did you use an outside publishing house for this no, so I, I'm I, I have my own account in KDP for this. Yeah. Okay. All right. How how, how many how many pages is it? It's a, a bit over three hundred. Whoa. Very nice. Uh, now, you know, we can't recite. This is not an audible here, so so we can't uh, we can't just recite the whole book. You know, if three hundred pages would take a, a number a bit of time. So, can you, can you give us some tidbits from the books? Like, well, like why why would I, as an Amazon seller, be interested in buying this book? Yeah. So you know, when COVID started, I, I was speaking like right before that. I was speaking at so many events. Like I did every month or every month and a half. I spoke at an event all over the place. Um, and then COVID hit and I was like, what am I going to do? I have all this free time, right? I'm not going to travel anywhere. Um, and I knew it's going to last for a while. So I thought I'm going to take on a big project and I thought I can do a podcast, a YouTube channel. Uh, but then I thought, what, what if I did something that, uh, I don't think anyone in the industry did, which is write a book for the industry. So it's not a book on like how to sell on Amazon. It's a book that if you have a product two or three or even if you sold your business, if you, if you are a seven, eight-figure seller, this is a book that you want to read. Um, so basically, like the first part, the first part of the book is about the fundamentals. So everything from product research until you launch. And then after that, it's about um, launching, PPC, supply chain, KPIs, basically how to run the business while you have some products live. And then the last part of the book uh, like a quarter of the book is about how to grow this into an actual business that can run entirely, almost entirely on its own, which is what I've built for myself with my team in the Philippines. Um, and that's what I've been teaching sellers for the past like several years. Uh, you know, most sellers are doing everything on their own, um, not really delegating. Maybe they have like one or two VAs and that's it, but they're not really, mm -hmm. they're not really able to remove themselves from the business. And a lot of sellers kind of struggle and then now they have an out with selling their business but a lot of them don't really want to sell it so um or even if they do want to sell it and they want to grow it further uh they cannot do that while kind of burning themselves out so uh that's what the last part of the book is about i also talk about exits a bit my experience with aggregators um yeah and a lot of personal stories as well about myself and um yeah, it's a, I, I think it's uh, like if I were starting out and I already had one product live or uh, I wish someone like told me all of this, you know, when I when I kind of started out. Yeah. All right. Cool. So how, how can people find uh, the book and and how much does it cost? Yeah. So it's it's just on Amazon. So um, if you're listening to the podcast uh, as like right, like when it just came out. Uh, then I asked Bradley kindly to kind of post it um, on that day of the launch, which is July 26. And then uh, on Kindle, it's going to be just 99 cents uh, during the launch week. Um, and after that, you're just going to be like a, a standard price. And we're going to have an audiobook version in like two months after the launch, I think. Uh, so that's coming out as well at some point. Uh, so yeah, you can just buy it on Amazon, basically. Uh, so you don't want us to do any kind of search, find, buy uh, a keyword to find it, or or uh, you're going to give us a two-step URL? <laughs> Is, are those allowed on KDP? Or how, yeah, how actually, can we find can, it? What, uh, what do we type in, in other words? <laughs> yeah, you can type in whatever you want. It's called Ride the Amazon Wave, so you can just type that in or my name in, and, okay. and that will kind of find the book out. Um, 
Yeah, one of the things I did is actually, I think on the third or fourth chapter, I ask you for a review on Amazon and I give you a link to leave my review on Amazon uh, inside the book. So I don't think- Oh, actually in the before. book. Yeah, actually in the book, so. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So so then if I'm if I'm reading it on Kindle, I almost have the link right there, huh? Yeah, you have the link, you have a QR code as well. Uh, that sends you to the listing to basically write a review. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, there you, there you, there you have it. Go, go find that book. 99 cents, like for 300 pages from one of the, you know, world's uh, most foremost uh, experts on Amazon, like can't beat that. So make sure to, if you're listening to this the week of uh, July 26th, then make sure to uh, take advantage of this during that launch. All right. Uh, one more thing is uh, you will be speaking at sell and scale summit uh, in Vegas in September. Do you know yet what your topic is, is going to be? Like maybe you do, you do, but I, I literally don't know because I, I haven't been involved in that. Yeah, I'm basically going to talk about how to automate your business. Uh, that's going to be my topic. And um, I, I think, in, and again, I, I consulted nice. like so many sellers over the years and I can say that the earlier you start, the better. Because I helped even eight figure sellers that are doing almost everything on their own and for them to implement stuff is a lot more difficult because they have so much stuff going on. But if you are just starting out, or even yeah. if you are maybe six figures or something and you're doing kind of kind of okay, you should already start thinking about how can I take two weeks vacation <laughs> if I want to, um, which again are the things that sellers don't really yeah. think about uh, and don't really dedicate time to kind of sit through and, and think what needs to happen uh, so they can work less while profiting more um, and launching more products at scale. Those are things that they don't really think about. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's going to be important. You know, like a lot of us know Tomer for his keyword research, listing optimization, product research, but this is another aspect that, that can have even bigger impact on your, uh, on your company. So guys, make sure if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, go to h10.me forward slash S3. S3, that's uh, Sell and Scale Summit. And then uh, use the code uh, S3BS100, S3BS100 um, in order to uh, in order to get $100 off of your uh, coupon um, or $100 off of your registration. Yeah, one funny story about this, uh, this event. So uh, I'm one of the consultants for, for the event as well uh, for Helium 10. And um, they asked me, like, who do you want to speak? And what do you think we should do at the event and stuff like that? And I said... Well, if you bring Gary V, that would be nice, you know. And two days later, they emailed me back and said we just closed Gary V. Uh, so that that was nice, um, and I was I was shocked, you know, to know that Gary V is coming to speak. Um, and honestly, like they took a lot of my recommendations to heart, and as well as some other consultants for the event. So I know it's going to be an amazing event because they really wanted to build an event for the industry and not for Helium Ten, you know. So uh, and that really shows when they kind of talked to me and consulted with me. And uh, I really appreciated that as well. So I really, I, I tell all the sales that I talk to, they, they should definitely come to that event. I think uh, if there is like, you know, my, I had another uh, baby girl just uh, just being born uh, last week. And um, I have two, two other small kids at home. And this is the only event I'm probably going to be traveling to this year. And I already booked it like so much time in advance. And I knew all of this is going to happen. Um, so I really believe this is the one event to go to this year. Awesome. Awesome. Really appreciate those, those words. And I'm definitely interested to see you speak on that, on that subject. Now, coming back to the the strategies, you know, you, back in the day, you know, in their first couple of times, we used to save like the 30 second tip of the week. That's, you know, towards the very end, but I, I want to spend the, the last 10, 15 minutes here with just a lot of strategies, you know, like they, they don't have to keep it to 30 seconds. Uh, you know, uh, you know, don't, don't be like uh, Kevin King and take 15 minutes per strategy, but if it's a really good one, then, then go ahead and then go ahead and do it. But, but let's just, you know, it could be about any topic you want. It could be about what you were talking about. Like maybe it's a preview, uh, a preview of, of what you're going to be talking about uh, at sell and scale, or maybe it is keyword research. Maybe it is product research. Maybe it's launch, maybe it's PPC, but uh, let, let's hear what your quick hitters are. You just mentioned product research. So there is um, there is one thing I think that is missed by a lot of sellers uh, when they do product research. Um, and oh, like it's no, no secret that it's just getting more and more difficult, right, with time on Amazon. It's not getting any easier. Uh, but it, it's also getting a, big, a bit different, I would say. Like you need different tactics to succeed on Amazon these days. So one of the things that we've done for a long time now, and I've been preaching that to a lot of Amazon sellers over the years as well, is that we take saturated niches and we basically 
look at the keywords in those niches, and then we t- we basically launch products uh, to those keywords specifically. Um, and I can give one example or even two examples of that. So one example is uh, I typed in cutting board on brand analytics. Okay, you can also type that in magnet or whatever. And then I saw that um, I, I basically scroll down in brand analytics to just see like very low SFR, right? Very like very low SFR to see if I if anything pops out. And I saw cutting board uh, for a toaster oven, right? And I'm like what is this thing? <laughs> so I click on it, and then I see in Amazon, the search results are basically basically one seller, seven-figure seller, selling four or five different types of the same product for different toaster ovens, which is just like a cutting board on top of the toaster oven just to place some stuff on it, like um, like herbs and stuff like that, just on top of the, of the thing. So basically, if you think about, and it also serves as a cutting board, obviously. So if you think about this stuff, like if you think about any product in the world, doesn't matter what it is, it can be a car. If you think about the car, you had the Ford car was the first one, only black color, that's it, that's all you can get. Now you have any type of car for any type of audience because when demand grows, when you have saturation of demand, you just have different options of supply. You will just have sub niches popping out all the time. So if you have... Um, Bath bombs, right? So we have bath bombs for women, obviously. But then you had bath bombs for men. You had bath bombs for kids. You have you have sub niches popping out because the demand is so high that there is enough demand for bath bombs for men to make profit with that. And when you launch something with like scotch scent or whatever it is, then you don't really need to target bath bombs for women anymore, right? Or maybe even not bath bombs as a keyword. You just focus on those gifts for men for bathroom or or those type of keywords. And that's really enough to make a profit. That's really uh, makes a difference with PPC. You don't spend that much on PPC anymore. You really kind, kind of come into your, your own world of um, of your kind of, of your niche. And you, you can really build like that example of that cutting board is like a seven figure brand with nothing really. Just one product, simple design, like maybe it's patent design or something, but very, very simple. Very simple thing to do. Um, so part of research, that's that's huge, I think. And I think that's missed by a lot of sales, especially beginners. That's the only, like, if I would do one thing as a beginner, that's the one thing I would do uh, with, like, a limited budget, limited resources. I don't know much about Amazon, how to compete, stuff like that. That's the one thing that will set you apart if you choose the right product. This way, it will really make a difference. Okay, that's interesting. Be- before we, we, we continue with the... Um with the strategies, there was one question I wanted to ask you, what, what you said kind of reminded me of it, but you had mentioned, you know, uh, looking at brand analytics. Now, in the, you know, since the last time we talked, Amazon has released so many different data points. That's really cool to, to help Amazon sellers. There's product opportunity explorer. There's the search query performance and search analytics and, and a lot of new things in PPC of the new th- things that Amazon has made available to regular Amazon sellers. You know, some of these were kind of available to vendors before, but but which ones are you like on the regular, you know, using to, to manage your uh, your businesses and, and your clients' businesses? Honestly, we're not we're not doing much with that uh, yet. I think we are still like ah. uh, still researching everything, still looking into everything, but we are not doing anything excessive yet. Uh, we are using Cerebro a lot in Helium 10 for different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and brand analytics is mainly used for product research, but not and black box as well. But that's pretty much it for like. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Hey guys, you, you hear it there? I mean, I've always said it too. Like I love these new data points. I definitely use it a little bit, but but for the most part, you're you're still okay. You know, with using Helium 10. And here we have you know, from one of the experts here that that you're still good with Helium 10. But it is cool that Amazon is making more things available because the more things that they make available, then then actually Helium 10 even can, can even make our tools a little bit better as well. All right, back to uh, back to the. The strategies. Do you have maybe a, a keyword research one? You gave us a product research one. Do you have a keyword research strategy you could give us? Um, yeah. Well, one thing that is missed with um, with keywords, I, I feel, is the title. Um, title. The title is obviously a, a critical point. So, one of the things that I call is like the variation in the title. What I mean by that is like the color, the size, the quantity of the product that you're selling. Where do you place that in the title and how do you write it? Like, do you write pieces in pieces or do you write PCS? Do you put it 
with a space, with the number of units, without the space, all, all of those kind of uh, question marks that I have. Um, so what we what we started doing is it just depends on the product. So again, we take all of the titles of the competitors, copy all of them, put them in a nice like Word document, like a Google uh, Google document, and then we just start coloring things inside of it. So we start coloring. Uh, the keywords that repeat themselves. So all of like, let's say yoga mat. So you color yoga mat all over the place. Um, but then with the pieces, we are looking not just how they write it because we want to write it the same way. We also look at where they place it in the title. Because if it's like a first aid kit, you probably want to have it at the beginning. Uh, like the number of pieces, that's critical for them to know how many pieces come with this first aid kit. 350 pieces, 200 pieces. Uh, stuff like that. And if you think about um, usually color, for example, like a red yoga mat, that will probably be at the end of the title. Like the color red will be at the very end. So you don't really need to start your title with like red yoga mat. Um, but again, that I think like with the title, I think that's a lot of times missed. And a lot of sellers kind of have like, and when we do this exercise, we did it so many times, you see so many sellers that are just like off point completely with like five keywords that are shouldn't be in the title because no one else has them doesn't have any any ranking relevancy or anything like that. So um, that's one exercise everyone can do right now. And you will just get more impressions. Like if you have a better title, it just means more impressions, more mm -hmm. re relevancy. Um, and just just take your competitor's titles and just improve it slightly. That's, that's all we really do. And I think a lot of sales are starting with Cerebro just to kind of see what are the top keywords and then build their title from scratch. Instead of what they should be doing is they should be taking their top 10, 20 competitors, take all their titles, come up with something that seems better, and then check that in Helium 10, Cerebra, and see if they miss any important keywords that they don't have yet. I don't think you've talked before on the show much about uh, PPC on that side. You know, we have PPC specialists who come in, but obviously, you know, part of what you guys manage is a lot, tons and tons of, of PPC accounts. So you guys have access to a lot more data than the average person. What's working for you uh, these days as far as PPC goes? Yeah, so I honestly don't want to go too much into PPC because I think it's like, a, it's a kind of worms, to be honest. I think if I talk to 10 uh, PPC experts, I'll get 10 different opinions and they will just fight it out. Uh, I think this is the only topic I never spoke about on stage. I think it's because uh, everyone have their own way of doing it. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think that's a bad thing on how to do PPC. One thing that I will say, uh, and this is to everyone listening, I know that uh, PPC is a heavy topic and it's difficult to do. And a lot of um, beginners or even advanced those just want to outsource that to an agency or to a software and just kind of, I don't want to deal with it. But at the end of the day, like PPC is your second biggest expense after inventory. Um, and if you, you must have someone on your team that understands PPC on a deep level. If you don't have anyone, it's you. That's just how it works, you know? So I have one PPC person on my team. Uh, we use a software for PPC. We used agencies in the past. But um, I, I will say that you have to understand PPC on a good enough level to kind of do it yourself with a software, with a, even if an agency takes over, what happens if sales go down? You're gonna go ten steps back if that happens, right? Your business can go under. Like PPC is so critical and important. Um, so to answer your question, like one thing that they think is is missed with a lot of sellers is to basically again take the main benefits, main features of your product, um, and also the main target, the main uh, keywords you're targeting. So. Let's say you are you are selling a product that is um, giftable for Christmas, right? So we are really doing like unique headline ads and unique video ads for those different times of the year. So we will create we will buy like stock videos, right? Of like a two two second video of someone gifting some someone else like a gift or something, and then that will be a part of the video ad for that specific keyword. And also the headline ad will have like someone gifting someone else that gift. Uh, but you can be even even more uh, granular with that. You can be like, let's say a major keyword is a non-slip yoga mat, right? Let's say that's like a major keyword with a few different keywords under it as well. Um, what we will do is we will have in that video like text flying in and out that it, it's non-slip and we only focus on that one keyword, you know? So I think everything will become more granular over time with this. 
uh, and we've just put everything like different, we call it different buckets of keywords and just target very specific keywords for video ads and headline ads. Uh, and that's, those ads are performing really well. Um, instead of just generic like video ads, we have those obviously, but uh, for the best keywords, like most important keywords or very niche keywords, that, that works really well. One to three more things, depending on how you look at it. I want one more strategy, but then, you know, you used to be a comedian and a magician in your other life. I want an Amazon joke of the week. All right. An Amazon seller joke of the week. And then number three, I'm not sure, you know, since we do, this is your first time actually appearing on YouTube since we, we've only recently started doing uh, the podcast and, and showing it on YouTube as well. You know, maybe there's some kind of magic trick you can do. I don't know if you have your deck of cards there or, or something that we could do there. If, if we can't do that, we'll, we'll just cut it out that part of the episode. But, but if, if we can at least get, um, if we can at least get uh, you know one more strategy here and then maybe an Amazon seller uh, joke of the week. Um, cool. Yeah. So I think um, going back to like product research, I think when we talk about product research in general, I think it just tells out beginners like product research is for beginners uh, I know how to do product research. I, I launch a few products. But the thing is, like, over time, you should change your strategy with product research. Um, the more money you have, the more things you can do, basically. And one of the things that is being missed a lot is variations. Like, I, again, one of the things I've done over the past two years is consulted aggregators uh, after they basically acquire Amazon brands, how to grow those brands. And the first thing that we did is we just said, oh, just launch these five colors and you will sell a lot more. Now, how do you do that? Well, we actually use Helium 10 for that as well. So we use uh, the extensions, the re review insights inside the listing, and we just see which variations have the most uh, reviews. But the other thing that we do with it, which is kind of interesting, and that's not a feature currently in Helium 10, is right now in Helium 10, you also have the, um, the date it was launched in, right? In each variation, you know when it was launched. So you take all of that into an Excel sheet, and basically we look at, imagine you take 10 competitors, you take all of the reviews, all of the variations, and we just want to see what are the newest variations that were launched by each of them, and how are those performing? So let's say three of them launched a green one, and it's already 3% review share, um, and it was only launched like three months ago, right? So we know, oh, we should launch a green one definitely as soon as we can. Uh, that's something that is definitely not not being done by anyone, I think, currently uh, in the industry. Uh, and that can, just launching some variations can double your business. Um, so that's definitely one thing that I think is really missed by a lot of sellers. And I consulted so many sellers over the years, and I can say that that one thing that they, I gave it to so many sellers already, like looking at their listing and say, just launch this one color, and you just change your business, you know, and they were... Uh, they were very happy to pay me more money just, just because of it. Cool. Cool. All right. Now uh, a joke for Amazon sellers. Actually one, one cool thing about, about the book. So in each chapter, I insisted to have a cartoon inside the book. Um, so these are, these are pretty funny. So, um, you have like, um, a father with his son next to his closet and the closet is uh, filled with products inside and it says samples on it. And he tells him, one day, son, all of this will be yours. So we <laughs> we have uh, we have those type of things. Um, we have um, we have this. Let me show this to the camera so you can see. But we have like a uh, a guy working. I don't know if you can see that. And it says uh, okay. aggregators on the back and the elephant and the elevate. It's like a piggy bank as well on his back. Anyway, we have. Um, you have a cartoon like that in each chapter. Uh -huh. That's what I said. Like this is this was written for Amazon sellers. You know, you will be the only ones to understand these jokes. Uh, these are like inside jokes for all of us. So awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, anyway, last second here, you could do a, a magic trick for the camera. Do you well, have anything that you're able to do? I, it? I don't really have like anything I can probably do right now. You kind of uh, took me off guard here. But what I yeah, will yeah, I know. We, we don't, guys, we don't plan these. I told you guys, we don't plan these podcast episodes. This is all just ad, ad lib. So he might have his props ready here. Yeah, yeah. What, what I can promise is if you come to Sell and Scale, I have some surprises planned. So, um, yeah. Ooh, I like it. I like it. All right. Well, uh, Tomer, you know, you told us how to find the book, but if people just want to reach out to you and uh, get some more info, how can they find you on the interwebs out there? Yeah. So if you just go to, you can go to my website, Uh You can contact me there. Facebook is good as well. 
And we also just finished the website uh, called jointopdog.com. So that's uh, if you want uh, to consult with me, check out uh, kind of what I have. There is a lot of free content as well. You can watch uh, links in there to kind of buy the book as well. Um, yeah, and also with the book, I will say that uh, uh, once you buy the book, you also have a link there to kind of see a lot more content from me that I did over the years uh, in different lectures, podcasts, articles, whatever, like all of that is in there as well. And that will stay up to date. Like the book is kind of written in, in a sense that it's kind of timeless almost with the strategies in it. Uh, but then that extra content will always be updated and it's it's free for those who buy the book. So uh, again, this is like uh, my biggest gift that I can give to the industry, you know, this book. So yeah, excited to get all of you to read it and uh, just leave a review on Amazon at the end once you do. All right, well, Tomer, thank you so much for joining us and giving us the, these excellent strategies. And I look forward to, to you know, what you're going to talk about on stage as nothing to do with anything that we talked about today uh, almost. So that's really, that's really going to be great. We're going to get a whole nother side of you. So guys, make sure to, to, to come September 19th through the 22nd to Sound Scale Summit, and I'll be seeing you there, Tomer. Are you, you going to join my uh, Zumba fitness class on the first day? Um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see. Come on. I mean, you and I have traded or mainly you helping me like with a lot of like weight loss things and diet plans and things like that. So this is my way to give back by getting you out there in, in your pink tights and and dancing the uh, the morning away. Got it. OK. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you there. Tover. over.